Well, hey there, you're on the internet, I still have too much free time, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Today's ink is by Noodlers. Green Cactus Eel, which, granted, is a very vibrant green, but it's coming out pretty damn bright in this, uh, this video. So, uh, yeah, I'm having some trouble with that lately. But, uh, anyways... All the tests were done in this Parker Vector uh, with a medium nib. I bought it in Spain, thought I got a great deal, then I came home, found out on the internet you can get them for like five bucks, but uh, it's got some sentimental value to it. I'm not a big fan of the Parker inks, so uh, generally I refill old cartridges with inks that I like, like say, Noodler's Green Cactus Eel, because these nibs, they're pretty tiny, and as you might be able to see, the that's a pretty tight little air vent hole slit thing going on. And so I find that the eel inks actually do pretty well in this pen. So let's check out the chromatography. As you can see, there's uh, this light blue down at the bottom. And then uh, going upwards, there's this dark band at the top. Different sort of variants of green. Uh, sort of an army-ish green and a lime sort of a green. But, uh, yeah, so there's some potential for water resistance, but really not a lot. Let's check the paper tests. Starting from the top down in density, Clairefontaine 90 grams per square meter. Now, uh, I said there's great flow and it's slightly wet, and that's because, yes, eel means lubricated ink. And uh, I thought there was good vibrancy because, yes, this is a pretty bold green, not quite as nuclear waste slime green as it's coming through on this. It's mostly just like a very bright green. Uh, 16 seconds to dry, so it was kind of long for a medium nib, but uh, not too bad. Um, so there was good uh, saturation, not great. Uh, good shading, but not great, because it is a fairly light-ish green, so there's sort of only so much shading you can get from it. Uh, no bleed feather spread. Water test was not fantastic. I mean, parts of that are readable, but not all of it. The paper came apart a little bit, but really not enough to justify how gone that is. But it is very easy to clean out of your pens, so... i bleed through. Next is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Uh, I said there was good flow, good shading, dry time was the same. Um, so again, a little bit on the long side, I'd say, uh, no sheen, uh, no bleed feather spread, water test was not great, but, uh, again, it's fairly easy to clean out of your pen, and it flows well, and it's a fairly well-behaved ink, so, there you go. Next is Tomo River Paper where I said there was good shading, the dry time was very long, but I do think the shading is very nice on this paper. And I say very long because it is a medium nib, this isn't like a broad nib. However, uh, lubricated inks do tend to take longer to dry, so that's kind of expected. Um, it said no bleed feather spread, there was some echo which I was somewhat surprised by because it is a fairly light green ink, but that could be just because of how thin the paper is. Uh, water test was really not impressive. Uh, that's barely readable, both <coughs> excuse me, both in person and on camera. That's that's pretty bad. But Tomo River does love to let ink just slide away when you add water. Uh, here's 20 pound copier paper. Uh, I said there was still some shading, which I think you can see, like in Fox and Lazy. Uh, dry time, I felt, was a bit long for such absorbent paper, but again, it is an eel ink, uh, which means it's lubricated. Uh, I said it was still bright green in color, uh, well-behaved, no bleed feather spread. I thought this water test was very readable. I thought it was one of the best we've seen so far. Uh, very nice. Not bad. If my camera would focus, that would be fantastic. Oy. Here's Mead notebook paper, 
where there was bleed and there was feather and there was spread and I thought it was very ugly, it was not well behaved. Uh, dry time was two and a half seconds. Um, I said it was still fairly vibrant, but I wouldn't recommend this as a pen, paper, and ink combo. Uh, water test was explosive and not very readable. Uh, a lot of it washed away, dyed the paper a bit. Bleed through was fairly bad. Yeah, don't recommend it for this paper, even in a fairly small medium nib. So here's moleskin notebook paper. Uh, you can still get some shading here. Not a lot, and sadly where the shading is, that's where you get the feathering. But uh, there was also feather and bleed, but I said again, you know, keep in mind that it's an eel ink. That tends to happen. Dry time was on the long side, but again, it's an eel ink. Uh, shading ruined by feathering. I felt it was not as vibrant, but it's still, I mean, it's coming through on camera like <laughs> like a highlighter ink almost. Um, water test was really patchy. Most of it washed away, and where it didn't, it feathered and exploded. Um, I did not like this ink on this paper. Uh, I thought it was just too temperamental. So there's green cactus eel. Uh, it's a lubricated ink. I think it looks good on the nicer papers. Um, it does well in slightly drier writing pens. Uh, it's not quite as nuclear waste, vibrant, glowy green as it's coming through here. Uh, I, I wish I could get this to come out a bit better. It's a bit more of just like a solid, basic green. But, uh... Yeah, anyways, for your consideration from the Triple N Network, uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And <laughs> hopefully I'll figure out this whole lighting thing and the white balance. But, uh, bye.